In this video, we're gonna be breaking down which bank is best for you, whether you're buying an investment property or whether you're an owner occupier looking to obtain a home loan. So before we kick off into the banking system, let's take a look at the overarching bank, which is the Reserve Bank. The Reserve Bank is Australia's central bank and it essentially lends money to our banks here in Australia. It adds 0.25% interest rate on the current Reserve Bank rate and lends that money out to our banks, who then lend it to the end customers. The banks also obtain money by being a deposit taking institution, which simply means our banks receive money from people like you and me, who put their money into their savings account, and then they can lend money out to other people in the market. That's obviously a very simplistic approach to Australia's banking system, but let's break down all these different types of banks and how they can help you in your situation. We're gonna take a look at the big four banks, we're gonna take a look at the mid tiers, we're gonna take a look at the neo and digital banks, and finally, we're going to look at the non-bank lenders. So let's kick off with the big four banks here in Australia. That is CBA, Westpac, NAB, and ANZ. Now these four banks really dominate the Australian market. They have the most lending and they have the most customers. They have a lot of branches which you can physically rock up to and they're pretty diverse in the products they offer and their tech that they have online. So these banks are typically heavily audited and they have tight lending restrictions. You might have noticed if you're going for lending with your homeowner or an investor that they're looking at your expenses and your serviceability in quite a lot of detail at the moment. Now the real reason to go with these big banks is due to their system and backing and everyone has the perception that they're almost too big to fail. In any event, the banks are typically going to be propped up by the government and so it's very unlikely that if you take a loan out from one of the big banks that it's likely to be foreclosed on you, which means you would have to pay the bank back and potentially fire sell your property. One of the great things about these banks is the systems and assurance that they can provide you. So if you've been a long time follower of our channel, Emily and I have typically dealt with CBA. So they're Australia's biggest bank and the reason we love CBA over Westpac, NAB or ANZ is because of their digital platform. So their net banking platform is world class. It's easy to navigate, you can have unlimited offset accounts against your home loans and we've just found their system and infrastructure to be the best as I've dealt with the other banks' platforms online, CBA has shone through the crowd and that's definitely returned in their share prices as well, um, you know, being a great bank and turning great profits for themselves. So when it comes to being a lender and dealing with the bank, the most important thing here is to get a lending specialist that understands your situation. Now we've been very lucky at CBA and we've had great contact with a lending specialist who's been there over 10 years and her name's Sarah, and don't go calling CBA and asking for Sarah. There's thousands of people that work for this bank. The most important part here is that you find a lender and a lending specialist that's within the bank if you're going to deal with them directly, that listens to your situation, analyzes all the number, and gives you real feedback as to what you can do in terms of taking the next steps. There's nothing, nothing worse than, than dealing with a lender and giving them all of your information and getting mixed responses around your lending capacity, around what information you need to provide. And that's one of the great things we found about CBA is when we dealt with our lending specialist directly, that we got the answers quickly. And as long as we turned and provide the information in a, in a quick manner, so we typically try to provide our information within 24 hours, CBA was outstanding in terms of their service and also fairly competitive on interest rates. Now let's talk a little bit about interest rates with the big four banks. They're typically going to be slow to decrease their rates and quick to up the rates as interest rates rise. The big banks are not going to be the cheapest in terms of interest rates, but they're also not going to be the highest. They know that the bulk of people will want to join them and use their lending services, so they're in the middle of the market when it comes to interest rates. The great thing that we found is that, yes, they're more flexible in terms of products, so that might be an advantage to go with one of the big four banks. So if you're looking for assurance and it's your first or second investment purchase, maybe take a look at one of the big four banks if you're just a bread and butter you know, homeowner or you're looking to purchase your first investment property. Let's jump into the mid-tier banks. So this is the section, second section of banks and it's not one of the big four, but they're well-known institutions. Now some examples of this might be Bank of Queensland, Suncorp, Bankwest, Heritage, and Macquarie. So these are really well-known banks and financial institutions. They've got some brand names, but they don't sit up with the big four. Now, why might you wanna look at one of these you know, mid-tier lenders like an ING or a Suncorp? 
And the real reason is because they might give you a little bit better serviceability if you're looking to invest and buy an investment property, or you've banked with them before, so you already got they already understand your history. Or finally, there might be a reason that that individual bank is slightly better than the other banks at one aspect of lending. I'll give you a few examples. So the Bank of Queensland is really well known for having great bank branch managers that you can go in and talk to personally. So maybe you're not used to digital banking or dealing with everything online or over the phone and you like to have face-to-face -face contact. So Bank of Queensland might be a better bank for you if you wanna to talk to a branch manager and really sit down in person and go through the paperwork there. Some other examples are Bank West are known to maybe have better lending capacity. Now Bank West is a subsidiary of CBA, but Bank West might have better lending capacity, which means you can borrow more money and potentially make a larger investment purchase. Now Heritage are a bit more of an older bank and they deal with paper still, so not online forms and online signatures. So beware of that. But Heritage have known to maybe um, help owner occupiers get into the property market so if you're an occupier, maybe Heritage is a better bank for you. Now as an investor, they might be more li limited in their lending capacity, but when you're, if you have unique circumstances where you're on casual income or part-time wages or you've just gone to full-time, sometimes these banks can be a little bit more flexible. Now I also wanna throw in credit unions into this level of banks. So there's a lot of banks, mid-tier banks and credit unions that fall into this category. Way too many to name on this list. But the real, real takeaway point for talking about these mid-tiers and credit unions is they can potentially help you based on your specific situation. So maybe have a chat to a mortgage broker if you want their opinion or do some research online and take a look at the mid-tier banks and credit unions that might be able to help you in your personal situation. Interest rate is not the only factor you need to worry about. You need to look at how the bank can give you a certain product and how they can give you a certain you maybe interest only period or help you get from your second to your third and fourth property if you're looking to grow an investment portfolio. It's all well and good to get your first loan and be happy with it, but if it, it cuts you at the knees and doesn't allow you to get more lending, then maybe it's not the right investment loan to go for you in the first place. Now let's jump to stage number three in terms of our banking tier list, and that is Neo and digital banks. So digital banks have been on the rise in the last few years, and they're really tailored towards homeowners and owner occupiers that uh, have a very simple structure. Now I'm gonna put a bit of a warning out there. If you're an investor and you're looking to grow an investment portfolio, these banks are typically really rigid in their serviceability and really rigid in understanding your financial situation. You might jump through a few of the questions that they ask up front and have a chat to a lending specialist online or fill out the forms in this case because they're neobanks so you typically don't get much phone interaction. And once you jump through a few hoops, you might find out that due to their lending restrictions, they really want bread and butter homeowners, and they're not really really looking for people who have three, four, five investment properties because that complexity is difficult for the bank to manage, and they typically just want the simple loans. So if you're a, a homeowner and you're looking for a great rate, the digital banks might be best for you. In this situation, these digital banks are looking for typically lower than 80% LVRs, and I know Athena, as an example, as your LVR gets lower, as you pay more off of your loan, the interest rate falls as well. Lots of these neo and digital banks are offering crazy interest rates at the moment, around the 1.9 or 1.8% mark for owner occupiers who have say a leverage, an LVR or a leverage to value ratio of 65% or less. Now obviously the interest rates will creak up, creak, creak up, creep up the higher your LVR is. So if you're getting towards the 80% mark, you're gonna be paying market rate and a bit higher interest rates. But this might be the pick for you. If you're looking for a digital experience, you can send them your bank statements and send them your information and your ID all online, sign the docs all online, and get your application approved within a matter of weeks, assuming you're a simple situation. If you're more complex, then maybe these banks aren't right for you. And let's take a look at our final category in our banking tier list, which might be the best for investors who have hit their lending capacity. So that is non-bank lenders here within Australia. So we've gone through the big four banks, we've gone through mid-tiers, and we've taken a look at Neo slash digital banks. The final banks in my tier list are actually not banks at all, they're non-bank lenders. And what that means is they're typically private lenders that have a pooled fund, and they lend that out at a higher interest rate. The most popular ones here in Australia are First Mac, Liberty, Latrobe, and Pepper Money. So those are typically the big four plays in the non-bank space. 
Now, the reason they're non-bank lenders is they have less lending restrictions on them, which means they can give you a higher serviceability. In layman's terms, in simple English, they can give you more money to go and buy an investment property than a big four bank or a mid-tier bank typically could. Now, you've got to be careful here. Don't take on that debt unless you're comfortable in the investment that you're buying and you're comfortable in the cash flows as well. So although you have greater lending capacity, this is great if you're comfortable with debt and you're comfortable with investments, but can, it can be risky if you're an owner occupier who's looking to get their first property and has struggled with a big four bank or a mid-tier bank and has decided to go with a non-bank lender to get into their first home. These guys typically charge a lot higher interest rates than your average bank. So an average bank could be charging you know, mid to high twos or low 3% at the moment. And these banks could be, these non-banks I should say, could be charging anywhere between four to 6% depending on your circumstances. You can also do uh, different types of loans with these banks like you can with the big banks in, in low doc loans. And that will allow you to again, reach more capacity in terms of your borrowings. Now for me, how I've structured our property portfolio, and this is where the real gold is, if you're going to take anything away from this video, is work with the big four and the mid tier banks to begin with. So typically the big four banks are gonna have the tightest lending capacity and the tightest restrictions on what you can borrow. Then once you've maximized your capacity with the big four banks, maybe look at the mid-tier banks and see if you can get more lending through those parties. And then look to move to the non-bank lenders, which will have the highest interest rates, but the maximum lending capacity. The reason you wanna do this is because of the comfort and assurance you get by starting at the top of the tree with the big four banks, and then working your way down to slightly higher risky lenders with higher interest rates to grow your property portfolio over time as you become more of a established investor or what they call a professional investor in some capacity and you, you get a greater understanding of your your debt and your equity and how to manage your cash flows. Woof. So that's a massive breakdown of the banks here in Australia. If you have your lending sorted and you're ready to buy and you're looking to buy within the Brisbane market, head over to www. Why, people don't say that anymore. Head over to purposeproperty.com.au, book in a free strategy session with myself, and we'll have a chat about how we might be able to help you purchase a property in the Brisbane market. Click this video over here for more things real estate, renovating, and financial freedom, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.